All right, so today we're gonna to be looking at the MakerBot print software, which is the software we'll use in the Makerspace to slice our 3D models in order to get them ready to print on one of our 3D printers. So right off the bat, as we come into the MakerBot print software, we're gonna to need to select which type of printer we are slicing for. It's very important not to skip this step because each printer will result in a different file type and we'll wanna make sure that we have the correct one when going to print. So we have three different printers in the space. We have the Replicator Plus, which is our newest and uh, one of the latest models of MakerBot. Uh, we have the Replicator 2X, which is one of the older ones, which is able to print in two different colors at the same time because it has two different nozzles, and that printer is unique in that fashion. It also accepts ABS as a uh, plastic type instead of PLA like these other two. And finally, the Replicator 5th generation, which is the predecessor to the Replicator Plus, is um, there's very little difference in between these two printers um, besides an updated UI and, and some stuff along those lines. The point is, uh, just to make sure that you've got the correct one selected, right off the bat, it'll make things easier in the long run. So we'll go ahead and slice for the Replicator Plus. It's, um, it's the one we probably use most, the one we have most of in the space. So if you're, and if your goal is just to print something and just knock it out, this is probably the easiest one to do it with. Uh, these other two can be a, a bit more challenging. So we'll go ahead and slice for the Replicator Plus. And it's already selected, so we'll minimize this. The second step we'll need to do is bring in our 3D model. And so for the purposes of this video, I went on to Thingiverse, which is an amazing website to get three free uh, 3D models that you can go ahead and print. Uh, this one's pretty cool just because I like the picture and uh, why not? So we're gonna print this. I've already downloaded the file uh, right here, this STL file. This uh, file format is very important. It's the, the one that we need in order to bring it into MakerBot Print. The, uh, the other one actually it accepts is OBJ. So one of the two will need to, uh, will need to come into this. So there we go, we brought it in. We've got our file and it's nice and centered on our build plate. This uh, representation is, uh, is a representation of the build plate on the, the MakerBot. And so uh, it, it's gotta fit within this bounding box, which is uh, also the space that we can print within. So that's looking good. The beauty of getting things off Thingiverse is that they, uh, it, it's a website for 3D printing more than anything. So if you find something on Thingiverse, chances are you'll be able to print it on one of our printers, which is awesome. And usually it's already set up and configured so that it's just simple enough to plop in and go ahead and print. Sometimes it's not so beautiful if you're bringing in from, let's say, a, a project you're working on for engineering or something like that. There may be more tweaking. Um, so also what I said earlier, if, you're if your goal is just to print something, you've gotten it off Thingiverse, uh, the Replicator Plus is our best model. You know, We're just going to bring it in, and, and it, it is almost as easy as just pressing export. There's a couple things you need to pay attention to, but other than that, it's a very, very simple process. So we've got our model. We've got some options here on the side. Right now we're just in free rotate mode. Uh, we can also look at print preview. So this is gonna go ahead and slice up the model. And what we'll see at the end is a representation of how the 3D printer will print it uh, layer by layer. So 3D printers work like a hot glue gun. It extrudes plastic in very fine layers and builds upwards by using those layers as we'll see here in a second. And this gives a pretty good and, and colorful representation of what we're gonna print, which is nice to see, and nice to see how it will come out. And um, just make sure that there's no quirks or anything like that, and just give us an idea of what to expect. So there it goes, it's printing upward. And we have the option here on the side to change which uh, layer we're looking at. So as we see in total, there is 358 layers that it's going to print, and what you can see there at the bottom, this orange thing is our raft material. So before printing any of the model, what the printer will do is create a raft at the base of the model to help it adhere to the build plate and keep it from moving around as, as it builds upwards. So this is uh, recommended for all models that you print. It is the default setting and we recommend not changing it, mostly because in our experience, we've had bad luck whenever we, we do take that off. It's it's printed in such a way that really helps it adhere to the bed, so it's just important to keep that on. So that's our print preview. We can uh, go back to our rota rotating view. Oops. 
and uh, we'll look at some of these other options. So we can uh, look at the models information. If you need it in a specific unit, for example, if you've uh, designed it in an engineering software and you've designed it in inches versus millimeters, if you, you'll see if you bring it in here, it's going to default to millimeters and it may show up as smaller than it actually is or bigger than it actually is. So we need to just change that to inches if that's the case. And you see in this case, that's not what we want to do. So we're going to undo that. But that's just something to keep in mind, um, something I've run into personally in the past that's good to be aware of. Moving onward, we got our print settings. Uh, and the beauty of this is that you're not going to have to change a lot of this, but it's good to know what you have the ability to control in case you ever want to customize it in, in a way that's not the default. So there are different extruder types for the printers. And the extruder is the, the element that gets heated and extrudes the plastic like the hot glue gun. So the default is Smart Extruder Plus. This is the one we have installed on all our uh, both our MakerBot Replicator Plus and our MakerBot 5th generation, the 2X will be different, and we'll go into that in a separate tutorial video. So Smart Extruder Plus, leave it that way. That's awesome. Layer height is basically each one of those layers that we saw, how thick that's going to be. So it, it, as you can see here, a thinner layer is going to be a finer detail, but as they say here, it's also slower. Whereas a coarser detail of 0.4 millimeters will be a faster print, you're, um, you're going to get out of there faster, but it's going to be a coarser detail. So if you need something that's uh, very fine, you want a high resolution, 0.1, go ahead, do it. Just be aware of the time that it's going to take, the time difference. And um, if you're just needing a general rough idea, uh, you go for the 0.4. You're going to get out of there faster. But the 0.2 is the default. More than welcome to leave it there. And it, it's, as I said, balance, detail, and speed. So you, you know, you're going to get the best of both worlds. So Shells is like the perimeter of the object. So if we go back to the print preview, and um, so let's see. There we go. So if we zoom in now, um, and this isn't the best model to show this, unfortunately, because it's very hollow. But the idea here is that there's two, uh, what were they called? Two shells, sorry. <laughs> two shells here, and that's the two elements you can see right there. And those shells define the perimeter of the object. Everything inside that shell, those shells, uh, will be described by this infill percentage. So 10% of the infill of this uh, material, this model, is, is going to be the plastic. And, and that's a good percentage, and that's the default, simply because for most models, you won't need more than that to give it definition and to give it a bit of uh, rigidity and a bit of, a bit of structure. Uh, for higher percentages, you will get a more, uh, a more balanced structure, but, you won't, but you'll also be using much more plastic, and that will increase the time as well that it takes to print. So just things to keep in mind. Obviously, some projects will warrant that. Some will not. So it's just something good to know about. Good to know that you have those options. So we're going to go ahead and let's go back in here. The last thing to talk about in this page, at least, is your support structures. If we add supports, what it's going to do is any place where there's a bit of overhang here, it's going to add supporting materials here as it builds upwards so that when the nozzle gets uh, right there, because it's going to print upwards, so when it gets to those higher positions here, uh, it will have something to print on so it's not trying to print on air. The beauty of these types of models, and this model in particular, is that this incline that, that goes up around this model is such that the printer won't necessarily need the support structures because it will have material to print off of at each step along the way. So let's go ahead and do this model real quick one more time so I can show you what we're talking about. And again, these are things you may not ever have to worry about, but Supports can be very important for uh, models that you want to print that, that have overhangs or have structures like this that um, may bow a little outwards or, or need something to print on top of. So we'll go ahead and uh, just look at that real quick.
All right, so there we go. Um, as you saw, that took a little bit of time to, to do and work out, and that's because the, the software is actually trying to figure out where to put these support structures. You don't have to instruct it at all. It's going to figure it all out, but it does take a bit of processing time. So now that we've got that, you can see what I'm talking about, those areas where the, where the software thinks that it, it needs support. It's going to add those flimsy structures that, at the end of the print, are simple enough to break off, but during the print, we'll just give it that added support so that nothing's drooping, nothing's sagging, and you get nice, clean definition around these areas right here. So just wanted to show you guys that some prints, you'll need that more than others. This, I would go ahead and print it with like this, simply because we do have those areas where it, it looks like it needs it, and the software seems to agree with me on that. Um, there's other times where the supports might just hurt the object more than help it, and it might just make it difficult. So it's just something to keep in mind, and that's the beauty of this print preview is that you can see exactly how it will turn out in the end. Um, one more thing I want to mention is that if you do get it from Thingiverse, what the author of the project will do is sometimes add the, uh, the steps that he took when printing it and, and, and how he got some of these end products right here. So if we go ahead and look on here, um, I just wanted to see. It doesn't look like this time he's done anything, but sometimes in the comments too you'll find little tips and tricks about how to print a certain model and, and that will be helpful. So um, in this case we're just going to go with, um, with the gut instinct here and we're going to export it like this and see how that goes. Uh, sometimes it's trial and error. A lot of this really is trial and error, so if you do end up with a print that's come out poorly and you want to try again, more than welcome to, and, and we're more than happy to, to see what maybe went wrong. Uh, a couple more settings in here that you have the option to work with are the arrange and the orient and the scale settings. So these will just help you arrange your models on a plate. If it comes in and you want it to be rotated in a certain way, uh, you, you have that option, and you have the option also to make sure that it's flat on the build plate, which is very important. And you basically just choose a side that you want on the build plate, We'll say that that side is the bottom, and voila, you've got it right there on the build plate. If I wanted this face on the build plate, you make that the bottom, and it will rotate it around precisely to there. Um, that's not what we want in this case, so we'll just leave it like that. Um, the other option is to scale it. You're more than welcome to make it smaller or bigger, depending on your needs. For now, this is looking like a good size, and it's, um, it's not our file, so... Uh, I'm going to assume that this is the size that's needed to, to get the effects we saw at, at Thingiverse. So I'm just going to leave it like that. But you do have the option always available to you. So we are ready to go and export this. Um, and, and all we need to do now is press the export button, select where we want to save it. I'll save it in the downloads and we'll call this Cool Math Visualization Print. Go ahead and save that. It's going to prepare the export knock that out. This step can take a bit of time just because of the processing power it requires from the computer, although now it looks like it's going pretty fast, which is awesome. So give that a couple more seconds to complete it. Currently everything in the makerspace is free, and we just asked you to respect, you know, some, uh, some basic civilities, like making sure we're not printing a whole lot and making sure we're not um, taking up a lot of the printer time. So small, uh, modest prints, you're more than welcome to print, and, and larger prints we may have to um, either scale it down or just try to find ways to make it less uh, to make it less consumable. And yeah, as you've seen, it's a very simple process. It doesn't require a whole lot of extra effort, especially with things off Thingiverse. You will run into issues as we have where if you're bringing in from a separate program, like a 3D modeling program, uh, SolidWorks, or something of that nature, you may have a couple extra steps to finagle it to print properly. No worries there at all. We're all about learning and all about experimenting. So anything you want to print that you're not sure about, Come on, bring it by. We'll make sure we can we can do our best to get it printed and, and get a physical model for you. So that's been a, just a basic uh, introductory view at MakerBot Print and some of the services we offer in the Makerspace. We'll include some separate videos that will go into more depth about the Replicator 2X and, and really just some of the differences between all these machines um, and, and why you'd want to use one or the other and, and what those differences mean for you. So. We'll go ahead and look at that, but this has just been to give you kind of an overview of what you can expect when, when going to print a file. Again, we're always more than welcome to assist you in any way we can. If you just want to come in and talk with us, we're also there for you in that res regard too. So don't be afraid. If you got something you want to print, we'll make it happen for you. Um, this is Dylan with the Makerspace. Have a wonderful day.